Hey, all. Welcome to the Common Good Podcast. Good to have you here. Hey, it's the... Uh, I literally just looked one second ago at what, what day it is, Paul. What 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 day is it? Is it the 19th or 20th of... I believe it's the 20th. 20th. It's the 20th. 20th. It's a... Uh, it's a Thursday, a little later in the day than normal for our conversation with astrophysicist Professor Berger and uh, Pastor Paul Wallace. Uh, but nice to see you. Good nice to see, see you. you today. And didn't that 15 second little run down there seem particularly long? It, it seemed did. like a longer 15 seconds. Maybe it's just because I'm so so excited and anxious to talk to you that we had. It's that. been a while. Yes, boy, uh, it has been a while. We had a little lull here in the uh, in the Vote Common Good podcast world. We took a couple of sessions off and uh and then had some travels on thursdays where things couldn't work and so glad to be back glad to be back hey how, how's the weather uh there in decatur georgia you know it's uh looks like it's it's, in, it's been hot but not not un, not unseasonably hot it's been in the low 90s sometimes mid 90s which is which most people think is hot which is hot <laughs> but it's july in georgia so that's that's actually pretty mm-hmm. normal and we yeah. got look like some maybe some of these lovely we have in the south down here we have um in the summer, we have these afternoon thunderstorms that roll in. Yeah, two days out of three, and they're beautiful, and I love them. It rains for forty-five minutes, and then it's over. And then the sun comes out, and the roads start to steam. You know, as mm-hmm. the sun delicious sun evaporates. It's, it's just it's great. It's actually it's great. I love it. Totally. And it looks, we might be having one of those coming in, but it's hot. You know? Yeah. How about uh, up there? And, uh, well, uh, it's it's summery. Yesterday was super hot. Today was nice and cool. This morning it's going to be eighty, but a little breezy, so it just all felt just all felt great. Uh, wow, days like today, but then it's going to be it's going to be Decatur hot, as we like to say around here. It's, you yeah. know, some people like, <laughs> is, that, is that a but, phrase? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they order their barbecue, they get a Tennessee hot. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. we're getting this, so we call it Decatur hot when it's like ah, that. it's going to be in the in the nineties this next week. Awesome. I, somehow yesterday I was trying to turn my television off, which honest to goodness, still in my life, it revolves, it, re- it involves two remote controls. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why we have like an Apple TV thing and then we have a TV and, and is it like and, the, uh, the missile launches where you need two keys? Oh, know, it's to, just, to it's launch the missiles. You need, you need two remotes to turn off the TV. It's still just outrageous to me that this is, this is the case. And I'm sure I, I am positive. There's a way to solve it that involves buying a, the right thing or program the right thing. As much as I like that stuff, I haven't done it. So somehow, uh, trying to turn the TV off yesterday around 10, 15 p.m., which for us here in the central time zone, that's news hour. That's mm-hmm. news time. And mm-hmm. on the East Coast and the West Coast, it's 11 o'clock. But around here, because right. we like to get to bed early to get up and work hard the next day. As we, yeah, you, as you we Midwesterners. Do, uh, as we do. Um, the, the weather was on. And I haven't seen the local weather in years. It truly oh, yeah. has been years since. Do you ever watch the local weather, like where the the anchor throws it over to the weather person? No, he's I haven't seen there, that. You know, he's I standing mean, by the by the desk. Not since and... I was like in high school have I watched <laughs> that kind of. Seriously, since, I mean, no. no yeah. Local news. Uh, I no. Yeah. It well, it's still on. Turns out, uh, at least on whatever station my TV randomly popped over to. And, and it's uh, broadcast, even though you get it, you don't get it to the air, but it's still broadcast. Right. Yeah, I'm sure I could have climbed up on my roof, plugged in that old antenna that well, no, they probably took it down. When we redid our roof. But anyway, the probably the could put the rabbit ears up there and pick that yeah. thing up just just and, and call it free and just been like, well, sure, it's That's all right. grainy, but it's free. Yep. 1985 all over again. And Shelly said, uh, oh, hey, hang on, leave leave the weather on. Which is what everybody does, right? I don't know, for whatever reason. Like the Weather Channel, if you're walking through a hotel lobby and the Weather yeah. Channel's on, you stop and you're like, oh, hang on a minute. I should probably I should probably check the weather, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, they in, played, I remember, they played the in, in the uh, the NASA, uh, in the dining hall at uh, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center 20 years ago. They had two TVs on, and one of them was the NASA Channel, which had just started at the time, and one of them was the Weather Channel. That's, that's what they had on the TV in the dining hall at, at NASA was the Weather Channel. I yep. mean, that's one of the great humble brags that uh, somebody says. Yeah, you know, when about twenty years ago, when I was working at NASA, and they just <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's great. That's like a name drop, uh, which I've stopped yeah. doing because Paul McCartney told me one time not to name drop. So yeah, I just, never I just think it's better. I just think it's better. And, and he should know. Paul McCartney yeah. should know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not true. It wasn't actually. That's a joke that I heard from Vince Gill. So, and I thought he was hilarious, but I actually heard him on a radio show. So I tried to name drop twice, but still, 
Um, oh. Name dropping doesn't really work. Uh, but anyway, this, so back to the weather that I saw last night, which then was shockingly interesting, right? Like they, they do a nice job with the weather forecast. And, yeah. and I heard then on my weather, the use of the phrase that I had heard on a news report about why it so, was so unbearably hot in Texas uh, a month or so ago, the heat dome. Have you heard this phrase? No, sounds promising. Okay, so apparently there's a new uh, phrase for an uh, atmospheric situation, and they call it a heat dome. Awesome. I'm, I can't remember how it's made, but he said the heat dome is now moving, and they had a little animation of it, moving out of Texas and then was kind of coming up through Utah and Nevada, and that then was going to start to expand and spill into, into Minnesota. So oh, you have to look forward to. Right. It, they used to just say next week it's going to be 92. Now they right. say next week it's going to be 92 because the heat dome the is heat on dome. the move. Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden there's a drama. There's a yeah. dome that's right, on the move. Right. I mean, we're all just. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Yeah. We can watch it. Single, on the... Yeah. You can watch it. That's all you can do. Tune in. Tune in tomorrow. Uh, hey, Paul, I've almost become uh, interested in birds, by the way. <laughs> I'm working on you. I blame you. I blame Good. you, my friend. I'll take it. What happened? I, well, here's how it happened. Uh, our, our, we, we gave to our daughter and uh, her uh, husband for an anniversary gift a little birdhouse. Mm -hmm. They were in a position where they, didn't, they couldn't use it. They were where they were living. It stayed here. My daughter then yeah. just said a couple of weeks ago, you know, I don't even want that thing. <laughs> so we were having a party in our backyard, and we thought, hey, it would be kind of fun to hang this little birdhouse here. Maybe some birds will come over or whatever. So I started buying bird f food for the yeah. for the birdhouse, for the bird feeder. Yeah. By the way, Paul, not cheap to feed the birds. Not to feed them well. I mean, you you can get dirt cheap stuff, but it's kind of nasty. To feed them decent stuff, it's a little in it. It's a little my mom had a, a whole budget for this. <laughs> Well, I can understand why now. Where, where do you get the dirt cheap stuff? Because I'm willing to pump these birds full of just I mean, nonsense. I mean, just... <laughs> garbage. Uh, oh, uh, Walmart. Sure. Walmart. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, like I'm ordering it off of Amazon, the Walmart of the air. So I, I, I don't know how it could be. Yeah. Well, I mean, but I guess on Amazon, you could get the expensive stuff too. I mean. Oh, maybe, maybe that's yeah. happening. Maybe, yeah, maybe but, if... but at Walmart, you, you really couldn't, if you tried, get the really expensive stuff. What is it like? Like, well, how much for like a 20 pound bag or? Depends on what it is. If it's black oil, sunflower seed, that's one thing. That's fairly okay. cheap. 20 pounds. I don't know. I can't even tell you off the top of my like head. Like $10, $5, more. $30. Yeah. Okay. For the expensive well, so... stuff more for a 20 pound bag, the more of it be 30 or $40. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're already into expensive. So I'm, I'm yeah. because these birds will eat a 20 pound bag in four days. Yes. It's unbelievable. I mean, who are you, you, getting? Just... Who are you getting out there? Have you, you figured out what, what kind of uh, birds you're looking okay. at? Okay. So now that leads to the next thing. We had some friends over and, uh, I was saying something about this robin situation because we have robins making laying eggs uh, in a in a bird's nest that they make, and I've been all fascinated with watching this. Now I'm trying yeah. to find the yeah. the name of the app. So my friend said, "Well, do you have this bird sound app uh -huh. uh, Mer from Court from Cor Merlin. from Cornell? Is that yeah, the one? It's called, it's called Merlin. Yeah. Oh, you already know it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've, I've been using it for years. Really? Well, you never oh, yeah. spilled the beans on this one. Merlin Bird it's ID. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It sure is. It's you wrong just... sometimes, but it's but it's oh. as, as a tool, it is a phenomenal tool. It's wrong helps sometimes. Me helps me check myself when I hear a bird. Okay. And it also is really good at picking out voices that I couldn't maybe hear myself, that I'm not tuned enough, in enough to hear. Like I've, if I've got a crowd of birds making racket, okay. it can say, oh, there's a hooded warbler. I was like, oh, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. But now I hear it and I'll go find it. But it's I never would have unreal. picked it out on my own. Like the, we're, we're sitting in our little backyard. The, it's just bird noises that I normally yeah. don't pay any attention to until now. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to feed these things. So now I've got a burden on my hands, right? Because <laughs> now they come flying up to the birdhouse and they look around and they're like, seriously, man? Like, yeah. where's the, where, where's the, where's the stash? <laughs> so I turned that, that dealio on and, the faintest birds in the background. I mean, you uh, really hard to hear. This yeah. thing picks them up and is like yeah. American Robin, Red Cardinal, 
yeah. that, that was the only two that we had that that day that we we're out there but all that i just started to think all right this is a yeah hmm. and you go somewhere go to a different habitat go to a field somewhere or uh really? something like that and 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 turn it on you'll get a whole different set of birds that you, that you don't see in your backyard yeah this is slightly it's becoming slightly interesting yeah hey you know uh, what i'm doing you know what i'm doing these days you'll appreciate this so, okay. something in you something in you i think doug will appreciate this i've uh, i've committed myself to burning all of georgia's 159 counties <sighs> God, I love stuff like that. I, I know you it. do. I, I know don't you care do. what it is. When someone's <laughs> like, I'm doing them all. Whatever there is, however you got, <laughs> tell me the list. I'm doing them all. I'm doing 159. Okay, 159 counties. Yeah. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm starting over. And in the counties that I've, I mean, uh, I'm starting with a blank sh list. And the counties that I've already birded, which is about 30 of them, uh, I'm going to a new place. That's, that's okay. part of the deal is going, finding new places in the state that I've never seen before, out of the way places. Is there a database somewhere that tells you this is a good place to go for this? Yeah, eBird bird will do it. It's called eBird will, will tell you. For, for every county, I can, I can put in the county name and it'll tell me the top spots. Is in, that so? In, in that county. And, and some counties only, I mean, DeKalb where I am has like 40 places, but some of these smaller counties have like three all right uh are, are are any of those things where you're going to be like and i'm going to ride my bike there or i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to walk there you, you, are you adding any flavor into it or is, is at this is point, getting no. get, getting no, there enough getting there is enough and then some of these some of these are obvious like state parks or something like that or wildlife management areas that are pretty mm -hmm. well marked but some of them are like you know uh what was it, a mill creek swamp <laughs> right and there's no signs i google it right there's nothing i go to the place marked on the map and there's nothing there's like a church so you know you're, i'm not going to mill creek swamp and, and there's nobody around to ask i'm in the middle of nowhere south georgia so you, you, know. you probably have as good a chance of stumbling upon a dead body as you do finding a gray-headed warbler out there <laughs> yeah. wandering through some yeah, field in rural georgia I've, like, oh. I've, I've, I've been in some pretty remote places and i've thought about it's that. a dumping ground for a yeah yeah you're gonna you're also gonna solve them uh, you know a string of uh, homicides across georgia because you have to be <laughs> uh, find, find all kinds uh, of things. hey maybe this is the start of a little book have you thought about writing a novel yeah uh, not not a novel but a sort of a creative nonfiction. Thing. I'm blogging about it. Actually, I've only got one post up. I've just started. Um, and I'm just, I mean, nobody blogs anymore, but I'm doing it just to sort of keep my thoughts organized and, you know, well, there's I, a new version of blogging though. It's those, um, uh, what's the, what, what's the, hmm, what's the app? What, what's the app that everybody uses now for, to, to write things, knowing you subscribe uh, to oh, people's, Oh, the, um, like Substack. Or yeah, Substack, sub, sub, yeah. Substack. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what. See, if you do it, if you say, "Oh, I have a Substack, Substack yeah. on this," then you're like, "Oh." If you say, "I'm blogging about it," then you have to say, "I know nobody blogs anymore." It's like Twitter. I know people don't use that anymore because it's <laughs> now you know. But uh, Substack is real hip. So, and then people but, would subscribe and pay you like eleven bucks a month. Like they would pay you a week's worth of bird feed uh, a month just to. Uh, just to have uh, you know access to your Substack, but would they pay for what I'm writing? I mean, at this point, yeah, on Substack, yeah, Good grief, Paul. People pay for. I mean, yes. If 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 my own confession about the stupid Substack stuff, I've I've uh, chipped in eleven dollars for for a couple of months. Yes, they they will. Well, I'll look into it. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna write it anyway. Put it up over there and then ask yeah, people to maybe i'll put it up both places. Right, i can i can post it both places i guess ask people to chip chip on in all right so i will try to keep you up to date if i stay uh alive and in this uh in this bird birding thing but between oh, yeah. feeding them and then just just being able to see the it's pro i'm probably into it because i think the app is cool which is means i'm probably not long long for the birding world but mm. Um, mm. I just think it's great that you can hear their little, they can hear their voices, the little, the, the faintest mm. of mm. sound and they, and the app somehow has some data connected to some database that can do that. I truly don't yeah. know how that technology works. Like, yeah, I don't either. Actually, I do have some idea, but I don't know how the, um, I guess the databases, I mean, on, on mine, you've got to sort of download 
like I've downloaded like the birds of the Southeast basically. Yes. Online, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that covers mm-hmm. pretty much, pretty much everything I'm going to, I'm going to hear. And then it just matches up the, the, the signal to a previous, to a, to a, it's just a library of yeah. sounds yeah. and it just matches them up. It's yeah. Yeah. It just matches them up instantly. Like that's the part that's amazing to me. Just, I don't know, just matches them up. <laughs> <laughs> How does it do that? How does it inside there? Like it takes the data and then what's it, what's the little algorithm it's running? Or is it pitches or is it tune, tones? It's, or? It's, it's pitch it, it's pitch and it's cadence and it's uh, tone. It's really, have you ever heard, of, I don't know if you had to take many like uh, physics classes or math classes, but it's called Fourier analysis. That's the term for it. No, no. See, word this, word. see, this is why this is the most interesting kind of science podcast on the internet. All right. What is that? What is the... It basically breaks up a, a pitch, a huh. sound into um, like simple sine waves. Okay. Like simple up and down tones, like like a bell, uh, like a like a xylophone sure. bell is pretty close. Yep. To, pretty close to what we call pure tone. It's a sinusoidal wave, sound wave. Okay. And basically, every sound you hear, including my voice, can be broken down into a certain subset of sine waves. All frequency right. wavelength all different i've got my own collection of sound of of sine waves that i produce when i talk it's like a huh. signature or a thumbprint in sound and every sing, and that's what makes instruments sound different like two instruments can play the same note say middle c but a trumpet and a clarinet sound totally different they're playing the same pitch but they sound different because their collections nice. of sine waves are different and same oh. for and so but and you and I both being, you know, middle-aged, uh, English speaking men, Anglo, <laughs> Anglo uh, you know, bird interested men yeah. will have a different, what'd you call it? Sound signature? Sound? Yeah. Sound signature. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But Thumbprint. apparently every Robin in my friggin' backyard's got the same one. Cause they're like, it's a Robin. It's a, <laughs> it's a red Cardinal. Like that's pretty. So, Pretty amazing that it can distinguish. Yeah. Full stop. Give it its yeah. its due. But then birds are consistently sounding like a robin. Is right. there not variation in? Oh, there's lots resolution? of variation within uh, with any given species. There's a lot of variation, and, and any given species can have up to twelve different sounds. So. Is this why uh, you say sometimes it gets it wrong? Is that what it's yeah, getting wrong? Sometimes it gets it wrong. Sometimes, like. Um, Sometimes it just I'm I'm going through the woods and it tells me that here's a rosette spoonbill, which is like a bird that lives down in South Florida, you know, and there's not one within 500 miles of me. There's no way it heard one. It just heard some noise, some sound, maybe a sound that I made, maybe a sound that mm. you know uh, a, a truck backing up made a mile away. Okay, and it and it just makes a mistake, but it, it can be faked out too. Um, birds imitate other birds, like blue jays imitate hawks really well. Blue jays imitate hawks, and it fools Merlin. Really? Like, I saw a blue jay imitating a Cooper's hawk, and I held my phone up to it, and it said Cooper's hawk, but it wasn't. It was a blue jay imitating. Okay, we we hawk. have blue jays, and we've been thinking we've been hearing hawks in our backyard. It could and be so, both, but but if you have a lot of blue jays around, it's almost certainly part of them are blue jays. They do it all but, the time. Like they're like they're little impersonators. They're they they got they're a little really routine. And, they, and 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 as far as I know, blue jays only do hawks. Any hawks. And Whatever you think it's you around. So you really think they're, see, I needed to, re, I need to retitle this whole thing. Cause it's not about space and it's not about how old the universe is. It's, it's the birder edition. Um, you really think they're imitating the other dinosaur ancestors or uh, downlines. They're not just blue jays. Don't just make a sound that sounds no, like a hawk. No, you're saying no, they're they hearing are, a hawk I mean, and replicating it like oh, a yeah, parrot. Birds, birds do that. Uh, thrashers do it. Mockingbirds do it. That's why they get their name. In fact, oh well, yeah, that's what makes them cool. And I thought that's what made parrots cool. Oh, they yeah. do human voices. Yeah. Oh, have you seen the ones this, this bird uh, somewhere in South Asia? It imitate and it perfectly imitates like drills and jackhammers and <laughs> car alarms and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a bird any sound it hears it's just absolutely freakishly perfect wow production of these sounds it's called the magnificent liar bird 
Just Google it when you have some. Boy, that's a time. fortunate. That's a fortunate name that it went so well with what it can actually do. Magnificent liar bird. Yeah. Magnificent liar bird. L y r e bird. Yeah, like like a harp. Um. Oh. Oh. Like a liar. Okay. Like a liar. Right. But also a bit like a liar. A bit like a liar. Um. How do birds do this? I don't know. They don't have ears, right? Oh, they have ears. Certainly do. Well, are they ears? Yeah. I mean, are they, they have ears, ears like? They're like reptile ears. I mean, they're like okay. reptile ears. They're they're, they're da- behind their uh, behind their eyes and low. Yeah. They have tubes like human yeah. mammal ears. Oh, really? No, not like yeah, like mammal ears. But their ears themselves are just holes in the sides of their heads. <laughs> have you ever seen a, a reptile like a like a like a oh, like a bearded dragon or a, any mm-hmm. lizard? Yeah. Right, right behind their eyes, down sort of close in the direction of their bodies, down their necks. There's two big holes. Yeah, yeah, I just thought those were, I thought the ear thing was more vibrant, yeah, I don't know, different than a classic ear, but. They don't have like ears, no. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm making a distinction, yeah. So, so they, they, they hear something similar to what we hear. Yeah. Because they can, because whatever they're replicating sounds enough like it in their heads and sounds like it to us. Yeah. And in the morning, I was uh, just a couple of months ago. I, I I was woken up in the morning, or this is back in the spring. I was woken up by this this idiot mockingbird in our neighborhood <laughs> who wouldn't shut up. It's like four in the morning, and I was like, and um, and that and I laid there and I figured out what I could do to entertain myself. I I, I counted the number of species I heard him mock and reproduce. Nineteen in thirty minutes. Nineteen different species of birds. That I really? could identify. There's probably more, but that I you did, and you weren't using the app. You you no. you are the app. Yeah, I just laid, laid there. Nineteen. He's just just going off, and it's completely random. Like just because he did, you know, a cardinal in this one doesn't mean he's going to do a bluebird in the next one. You know, it's just he just completely randomly thrown scattered in there. It's what do you think? What do you think this idiot mockingbird? <laughs> Which I never. I don't know why that's so funny to me, but just you because know, it was 4 a.m. Otherwise, I would, would have thought. Here's a mockingbird that just has no idea that he is all up in your business. And you are <laughs> like, all right, bird. <laughs> He's just trying to impress the uh, the ladybirds, I guess. Um, yeah. What- I've, I've, I've read that they, that they, that, that the ones that, that there's a theory that the ones that sing early like that are just trying to, like, you know, Joe over there sings at five, but I sing at four. Like, you know, look how virile lion like mm-hmm. can wake up earlier than him and really put it out hmm that that seems like one of those off. one of those uh things that's explained that by the maybe by the observer more than by the yeah. bird it's one of those yeah oh absolutely one of those buddhist teachings that you see the world as you are not as it is <laughs> but like i'll tell you what the bird's doing he's showing off and he thinks he if he gets up early like hey do you get up early yeah, <laughs> I think you might be. I think you might be talking about. Uh, uh, <laughs> I that think definitely, talking... definitely feels like that. I completely agree. All right, yeah, because so I mean, look, I, I am, I am all for uh, evolutionary biology. I think yeah. it's true. I, I totally buy it. I'm not coming down on that at all. I'm all for biologists, and I'm all for uh, people who study uh, current living creatures. The level to which we anthropomorphize the yeah. behavior of animals or the reason why they have a capacity is simply incredible to me. Like <laughs> really? You, 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 like it, it could be so many things, right? I know that reproduction for birds is a, is a big deal, but just maybe there's not a higher, <laughs> I was going to say a pecking order, but a hierarchy of, of all these things that maybe, some maybe. other female bird is now interpreting and somehow knows what, what time it is and is like, anyway, could be what or they're maybe, doing. Maybe he's just got a couple of wires crossed in his head and just, you know, just doing some, doing some vocal warm ups. Maybe yeah. he's just, uh, maybe he's just trying of, to make it big on the next road show. And he's thinking, we don't know. <clears throat> I need to get my bird, yeah. get my bird voice. Yeah. No, I know I, I, as a physicist, believe me, as somebody who deals with mathematics and <laughs> can, I, I, I have, the, I have the, same res- absolute respect for biologists and for uh, all that, but I, I do I have the same I have the same thought sometimes. It's like, is that really the only explanation, or is there yeah. maybe something we haven't thought of yet? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be something more. I mean, okay, sex, food, and companionship are three really strong drivers of a whole lot of things in this world. So it, that's always a good place to go first, right? Yeah, are you yeah. looking for companionship? Are you looking to reproduce? Or are you looking for yeah. something to eat? That yeah. that explains, you know, a lot. Uh, but then again, I don't know. Like maybe maybe there's another reason that some idiot mockingbird is up at idiot four o'clock in the morning. Maybe he's, maybe he can pick up vibrations and he just knows when when people come walking by that he picks up their just sheer uh, frustration and he's just a little troublemaker. He's just well, a, he's definitely that little but boy he's out there. Talented though, I mean, goodness. Because the reproductions are not just kind of like that other bird; they're they're like dead on imitations. So, so what what you you said? I I counted you, that you counted nineteen within a uh, half an hour. Half an hour. How many bird voicings do you feel like you could hear and identify? Roundabout. I was is, talking, is that it? Like, were you out of bird sounds you could identify? I've, I've got a no, no. I, I've got a friend that can do about two hundred. Um, I might be able to get a hundred. Probably so. Okay. I could probably get, I could probably get a hundred of the most common birds in Georgia. And there's, you know, 350 species regularly seen in Georgia. So that's still a small fraction of them, but I could probably get about a hundred. So at this moment, if you didn't have the pressure, you know, of, uh, of this live stream podcast, you could name 100 birds by ear. Yeah. Probably. I mean, I mean, without even hearing them, I'm just saying you could name them. Oh like, gosh, you know yes. The... yes, yes. It's, it's not like a special skill. I don't skill. think I'm I just, could I'm, name. I'm just, I don't I'm think. Just... Could you name a hundred singers? I couldn't 100... name one hundred people first and last name. I don't think. I think oh, if I had on. to start, you know, so many people. Doug, <laughs> I know, you are, but you are Mister. I, uh, I know extroverted. You know so many people. I you do. Could, I you could list five hundred people if I gave you time. I bet. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I bet. Okay. Maybe. I, and I'm not saying I don't know them and the data wasn't in there, isn't in there at some point. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, I just find that to be remarkable that there's 100 bird varieties and you could just start yeah. running them down. Yeah. It's like 100, it's, it's, 100 of any, 100 of anything is a lot. Like that's, that's a, <laughs> That that is beyond like a memory gimmick thing. But That's no, deep no, knowledge it, it, stuff. I mean, that is. I mean, you, you could list a hundred of a lot of things, don't you think? I don't I mean, know. I feel like I can't. You're, I, something you're interested in, something that you spend time reading about, and interested in, certainly. How many countries could you name? <laughs> okay, don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, there's 280 something of them. You, I bet you could get a hundred countries. So. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate your confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying as someone who's not a list person, that okay. is remarkable. Okay. Uh, so, well, thanks. so, so touche. And I, look for, I'm sure, I'm sure the, uh, the listenership is divided. There's, you know, uh, there's two on each side of the four people that ever listened to this stuff. <laughs> Uh, that the two of them are like, no, I can't name a hundred of, you know, can't name a hundred things, uh, of, you know, inside of one set, I could certainly name a hundred different things, but not, not, not birds or, uh, and the other people are like, oh no, I totally got that. I got that on, you know, I could do that on, on names and colors and s countries and, you know, yeah. all, all varieties of things, s you know, sub subsets probably do a hundred, you know, hundred scientists, a hundred singers. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. man, that, that blows me away. Hmm. All right. So you got a hundred of those. All right. Well, let's see what else, you know, Paul, because we, uh, we did talk about a couple of, uh, a couple of important, anything else on the birding front? Or no, the, no, 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 no. I feel like it's time for some science. Or the parlor trick of memorization that you've been crafting over all of these, all no, of these there's, years. There's, that... no, there's no parlor trick. It's just, <laughs> uh, if you're interested in something, you, uh, you read about it and you, that's probably what it is. Is this that's, interest is all it that's, is. that's probably all why. Yeah. I just yeah. am just uninterested and uninteresting. And therefore, you know, I know. I, well, I can tell you one thing, Doug, whatever adjectives I might use to describe uh, you, uninteresting is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, I've, I've whittled myself down to, you know, six or eight of pretty much anything. That's all I know. Uh, all right. Um, how old is the universe? 
uh, this this feels like the universal question, probably a clickbait uh, headline, is what I was thinking when I uh, read the article after you sent it over this way. But the the article headline in USA Today is how old is the universe? Well, a new study, and I love that. I love it whenever there's a new study. New study. Because I'm glad they're going to keep keep studying things. Mm. Uh, a new study says the Big Bang might have happened 27 billion years ago. Yeah. And honestly, Paul, when I saw that headline, I was not slack jawed, dumbfounded. Thought, what? How can that be? I thought, well, what was the old guess on how old the universe was? <laughs> the old guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like what's the what? Um, and then I was about- thinking. It's about probably older or younger than that number. Like, are they saying it's younger or they truly had, I didn't have a reference at 13.1, but until I saw something about 13.3 billion or 13.4 yeah. billion years in the article. And then I thought, oh yeah, yeah, that's the number that I, yeah. that I knew. So maybe had that's, I been pushed on that number. Yeah. That's um, roughly twice what we, what the, what basically the, the consensus right now is on the age. It's twice as old as we thought. Well, that's what this guy's saying. I mean, this is one of those deals, you know, uh, further study is warranted. Yes, but it made it into the USA Today, so it has to have some level of... Oh, yeah, and it made it into a, to a journal also. I mean, the guy's not a quack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, did you, I, did you read I, the journal? The journal I didn't, was I didn't like... actually read the, read the article, no, but it's, it's a legitimate scientist, and I can't remember what journal it was, but... Um, I mean, a legitimate scientist. He's just trying to come up with a way of explaining some results that we've found that we actually talked about on this podcast. A month yes, I, back. yeah. When I when I read the article, I was like, "Hey, hang on a second. I remember yeah, some of that." Talked a little bit about it. So he's find, trying to find a way to 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 explain some some results that have come from the Webb telescope. Oh, it is from the Webb Telescope. I somehow I missed that. That's yeah. The Webb Telescope kind of. I mean, we, we'd sort of gotten hints of it before, but the Webb Telescope has kind of brought it into focus a bit. And the and the basic problem is this: the basic problem is that galaxies seem to have been fully formed before we thought they should have been. Back in hmm. time, that 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 like the let's say the universe is thirteen point seven billion years old. Sure, if you're into that old old yeah, story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> strictly passe. You believe um, that nonsense? Then we wouldn't. Then we kind of expected the first major galaxies to show up maybe one, two billion years later. So mm-hmm. eleven billion years ago, say. But they're showing up earlier than that. They're showing mm. up, uh, you know, half a billion years after the Big Bang, that kind of thing, which is way earlier than we thought. That was one of the the observations that prompted this guy to start thinking of this way. So he's not only saying that these universes are appearing closer to the events that we call the big bang, yeah, but that the big bang was longer ago than we thought. Right. Or- and the, the point is, is that these gal his belief is that these galaxies really do take billions of years to form. Therefore, there oh. should have been more time. The universe should have been around more time before them. And so it pushes the data of the Big Bang back to allow for time for them to develop and to build up into that size for the galaxies to become as large as they are. Hmm. Well, the, the, the publication that it, this was in was the July 7th um, edition of the, quote, Monthly Notices of yeah. the Royal Astronomical yeah. Society. That's a, that's a major thing. That, that's, a real, that's a real journal. That's out of England. Oh, it's got to be a real journal because they apparently do not care about updating their their name of their journal <laughs> at all. <laughs> Monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. And then I mean, And there was a person, you know, uh, pedaling a, a bicycle delivering those when they uh, were launching that whole thing. Probably even before world. bicycles. Might have been before the Oh, yeah, the yeah. Wheel. Royal Society goes back to Newton's time. Yeah, the monthly notices. Just, yeah. just incredible. Back, what do people, back, back. what do people in the industry call that journal for short? It just M N R A S. But it's, but it's a, but it, but, you know, it, it's name aside. It is a legitimate. It is a completely upper level yeah. publication. Legit. Really yeah. Totally legit. Yeah. How, how many, how many letters do you think he can have in a, 
in an acronym before it becomes just outrageous because that's five M N R A S. I mean, you're... I think five might be the max. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 really pushing it. You know, just you're going to get a word out of it at some point. Um, all right, what? So yeah. so uh, how is this? How is this important to us? What people like you, uh, of course, that that you know teach on the yeah the yeah. the nature of the universe and how old it is and what we know. Like, what's important to you? That when you're going to talk to the uh, to the fine students when they come rolling into you know your physics class or some yeah. astronomy class yeah. this this fall, believing that the Big Bang was 13 plus billion years ago, and you're like, oh, we now know well, a thing or two. Well, you know, I, you know, it, it this this might be forgotten within six months or okay. Year. I mean, it really might. People come up with pu print, published papers on all kinds of things all the time. And I'm not trying, I'm not disrespecting the guy either. I'm really mm -hmm. not. But the point is, is that this kind of thing in the scientific community, it's not, a, all it tells us is to, you know, read the paper and think mm. about it. Mm. And so my issue with it, the thing that makes me scratch my head is that there, we have determined the age of the universe, not in one way, but in several different ways and they don't really depend on each other the mm. two the ways of measuring it don't really depend on each other the result of one doesn't depend on the, the assumptions are independent you see what i'm saying so it's kind of hard for me to see how we could adjust all of those to fit this mm. you know what i mean i mean how could all of those have been wrong independently i see do you know what I mean? I mean, like, yeah, yeah, no, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So yeah. there's some, some data here that's, that might have some other right explanation to it. Right. Right. And I, and I really, what, what I, what I read, what I got from the article, I haven't read the, the uh, actual scientific paper, but what yeah. I got from the article is that this guy was just trying to come up with a new way to explain these results um and found a way to do it an interesting way to do it but that doesn't mean it's the right explanation Got there it. are you know what i mean i mean it's, it's a possible yeah, explanation I mean, totally it, so, so but this it's guy... an explanation that, that that demands that other things have to be different too and we have to check and see if those things are really different also if it, <clears> so there's but, some data that that this this scientist has that seems inarguable and that's mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. age of these galaxies people mm -hmm. are like yep no these galaxies are older than we thought like the james exactly. webb has now told us this and this is one of the th explanations for right. why why that why that could right. be right we talked about the basic conundrum a couple months ago on the podcast yep. and this is just one theory put forth to explain those old galaxies Hmm. There it's a pretty bold one though like if, ah, if yeah, it's a pretty bold one right yeah, yeah like uh, it, because if it for whatever reason we care a lot about how old the universe is as, as typical people which is probably why some editor at usa today is like no that's a pretty good headline let's uh let's 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 make an article out of this and for you in the field you really care about how old the universe is yeah right like that's a because yeah. it like affects the, so many other things that we teach Yes. And if, you know, and if this guy's right, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's exciting, but a lot more, a lot more research will have to be done a lot more you know, mm -hmm. years worth, um, before this is sort of decided if this is, if, it, if this is for real, it's going to take years to establish that. Huh? Is there some, I don't know astronomy professor somewhere that then is like, well, there goes the pop quiz question about how old the, how old the universe is, how long ago the big bang was like, is that one of those things that just ends up like in the, in a, in a little pop quiz, third week of, of class. That... It, it could, it could, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think what, at this point, I don't think prof professors are going to teach anything different than, than the more or less established line. I think this study well, will be mentioned. It'll be mentioned. All right. But, but this is what gets us Robert Kennedy Jr. running for president, right? Is that these, you know, they're 
no matter what, no matter what they hear, they're just going to keep teaching the same old thing. And we just need to run <laughs> more studies. And <laughs> no, it'll be, it'll definitely be brought up as, as a, uh, as an illustration of how science works. I mean, oh. we don't really have anything to defend here. I mean, the, the, yeah. that's really, that's really the truth. And that's what makes science yeah. possible is that we really don't have, I mean, people, I mean, individual scientists, yes, they have careers they're trying to justify and, you know, grants are trying to get money, you know, trying to get money, but in the, on the largest scale, science really doesn't have that much to defend. It, it will be investigated, you know. That's such an interesting perspective. Doesn't have a lot to defend, just investigate it. And then if the facts change, it'll say no, something science, different. Science is the method. It's not the facts. It's not the facts. It's the method. That's what people get confused. People, students come into college thinking the science is like this static pile of facts. You know, like, yeah, we use it that way, don't we? We say it all the time. Listen to way. the science, follow but it's the not, science. It's not, it's not, it's a method, and the method itself is not really up for debate. What should we call? Okay, now let's, let's do a little philosophy of science class here. What, right. what, what ought we call that? Uh, what, what should we be calling the information that we have been comfortable saying yes to that's gotten to us because of science? If it's not, science says or trust the science or you know the, that kind of you mean just the theories well like people do this all the time right they'll they'll say things so i mean i was making a a flippant joke about this person running for president named robert f kennedy uh who's the, oh yeah i've, I've the I've, grandson yeah. of bobby kennedy and his, oh i know you're and, talking and, about okay so he is very fond of sharing ideas that don't match the current agreed upon thinking in a variety of fields. Right. Right. And when people say things like, well, scientists agree that this doesn't, you know, vaccines don't cause, you know, autism. No, 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 they don't, they don't say that. They, I know the studies, I do the studies, this, the work. What, what should we call the thing that that people who do science agree the, on if it's not if we're not going to say the science says this the, the, the science says is it's a shorthand way of saying a longer thing which mm -hmm. is kind of clumsy to say which is that when it says trust the science all they're really saying is trust the best information that we have right now it's a probability thing it's it's not a black and white thing it's look this is the best based on 30 40 80 however many years of research people working on this this is the best knowledge that we have right now this mm. is the, if i was to lay my money on it i would bet on 13.7 billion and not 27 billion mm. because i think it's more probable and that's true with vaccines or whatever you know it's like this is the best established knowledge that we have that's been tested the most not perfectly mm. there's more to do it's not exhaustive mm. it's not ironclad there's no certainty here but it's the best that we have and I'll, and I'll go with that. And I know we've talked about this a bunch of times, but it just is so important because that is not how people use science information, right? right. They're they think like, like, they think it's like math class when it's like, like, like particular kinds of math. It's like, it's right it's, or it's wrong. It's, and when ju it's just it's math. True, it's just the science. Yep. This is right. just how we just know how things work. It's no, no, we're, we're learning how things work and learning is a difficult, messy process. And we're never sure. And yet there are a whole bunch of things that are, you know, pretty well, <laughs> pretty well, yeah, pretty well right. established. Like right. that doesn't mean that everything that, that current best guess is equal across all current best guesses. Absolutely not. Right. These shades of gray people have a really hard time dealing with really yeah. hard time just dealing with, with the uncertainty yeah, all of, us. Yep. Shades yep. of gray involved and, and they, all of us. Uh, but that's one thing that I think um, uh, science, you know, there's a little critical thinking that you get um, from science when you, when you take part in it and you see, and you see it operate, um, you know, it's, look, we're just doing our best here. <laughs> mm, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Um, and yeah, we've been wrong before we'll be wrong again. But I mean, if you can bring, if you can come up with something better than, than, than our, than our established scientific ways of going about things to get to the bottom of this stuff, then let me know what it is. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But right now it's, and it's what we got. We're, 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 go, we're doing this as we go. It's like being a parent, you know, you don't, yeah. you don't have a, 
you just figure yeah. it out you're figuring it out yeah i used to have to say that to my kids i remember especially when they got to be a little bit older like teenage years we yeah. had four kids very close in age so we had a bunch of teenagers all at the same time oh, like, like they weren't close in age they were in subsequent years so like we had an 11 12 13 14 year old like, really that they were that they were just yeah. there's a period of time where we'd have like an 11 year old and a 13 and a 13 and a 14 year old <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes we'd have uh an 11 you know like because of where of, of where birthdays landed yeah yeah um yeah. so so all, all right close and i remember at one point they did some a couple of them did something probably our boys because they tended to band together and do things that we didn't want them to do and a certain age i don't know 12 or 13 where when you get caught and there's going to be a consequence you really want to know what the consequence is going to be right? and what right. the punishment will be and how severe or how long. Right. And, and apparently as the perpetrator, you feel like, and I have a right to know that information right now. Right. <laughs> like, okay. You just you know, like, like literally you some schedule of punishments in some book somewhere. All you got to do is go look it up. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So they were going on about like, well, how long and what's it? And I just remember saying something like this, like, I, I don't know. I did not wake up today <laughs> with a plan to put into effect a consequence for people at two different ages. Like, mm. I, I don't know. Right, I'm going right. to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go make something up. I think is what I said. I'm going to go, I'm going to yeah, go and, figure and, it out, you know, which meant make it up. So maybe that's your answer. It's our, you know, it's our, it represents our, Human humanity's very best guess, very best information, very best knowledge to date. That's yeah. what science is. And the problem, I mean, I don't know. This is part of the social struggle that we have, you know, is that people just truly don't trust each other's current best guesses on things, on, you know, things right. that have a significant amount of of consequence. Right. It's just, right. it's, <clears throat> I mean, I, I've, look, I've been very comfortable living in a postmodern world where we don't have certainties about things and all. Yeah. Um, but it, it just feels like we're at a place where there's almost nothing at which two people who choose not to find agreement can even begin to agree on the basics of the thing. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, like, wow, that this is just a truly remarkable uh, yeah. place that I, I, I don't know. I feel like we're in as a, uh, as a society and not just with like one-off philosophy students, you know, in their junior right. year of college that are, you know, willing to deconstruct everything because they finally got their hands on a Derrida essay, but talking about people who, you know, are full, full functioning adults, uh, you know, running you for know, president. You know what I'm hoping for? I'm hoping as, as I, uh, back to the bird thing for a second, as I go about this, uh, state and most of the counties are small rural counties, Mm -hmm. um, as they are in pretty much any state, um, coming across a fellow birder who's like totally like on the Trump team, uh -huh. but we can go and, but we like, but we get together like over birds, right? Yes. That would be really nice. Just, just for had to have an hour, we could go around together, right? Looking at the local birds together, you know, because, wouldn't that I mean, be great? And our right state, end, Georgia, you... Georgia is just, it's like all of a sudden we're in the middle of the political, of all of it. Yeah. Of all of it. And it's, uh, you know, quite the divided state. Yeah. And then right at the very end, you can say, man, this was great. Let's, let's do it again in Florida and go see the jailbird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just it, ruin the whole thing. Ruin right the there. whole thing. <laughs> burn it all down. Uh, yeah. What does the jailbird sound like? Uh, yeah, I want the election. That, what, what is the song? Yeah. The song of the jailbird. Yeah. Is that an Elvis song? <laughs> Good one. Should is it be. no no jailhouse rock is that what you oh jailhouse rock that's what i'm thinking of yeah 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 i really was thinking of jailhouse rock yeah. uh jailbird all right hey let's let's talk about this uh because people need to start making their plans if they're going to join the uh the doug oh, and paul yeah. excursion uh in oh, april yeah. uh to I go see wait to do that like april 23rd 24th something like that right eighth, so, eighth, uh, eighth, eighth april 8th eighth? Eighth. okay it's a single digit somewhere yeah okay six um, eight something like that uh, on October 14th of this year, 2023, yep. there's going to be a ring of fire annual, uh, or, or, uh, uh, annular eclipse mm -hmm. yep. that will cross 10 countries, including ours. What is a ring of fire annular eclipse? It's awesome. I'll tell you. 
Uh, you know, the do, moon, do we need to plan for this too? Do we have to like uh, make? No, it's history? not quite the same. It, it's, it's no. I think just just the total one. Okay. Because there's nothing. Uh, let me just put it now. The 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 level of in, of of a total solar eclipse is in a class by itself. Okay. And then everything else follows. There's there's like total solar eclipse, and then uh -huh. like this much space, and then all the other ones down here. Than every other good thing you've ever experienced in your life, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, and the annual eclipse is is way up there, but it's not. It hasn't made that leap to the total. Basically, the moon orbits the Earth, right? Good on that. Moon goes around the Earth. Okay. <laughs> for you, uh, thank flat you, Earth thank you for there. checking in. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. But but its orbit is not circular; it's elliptical. So sometimes it's far from us, and sometimes it's close to us, relatively okay. speaking. Okay. So as you know, when things are far away, they appear to be smaller. Yes. So if the moon is near its far as this point in its orbit and then passes in front of the sun, it's not big enough to cover the entire uh -huh. sun. Ah, look at and so that. You, what you get is you get a, the annual, the ring annuals means ring, right? So you get what you get is you get the, the outer edge of the sun making a ring in the sky. Huh? With the moon blocking out, you know, probably ninety six percent of the sun's surface, of the sun's visible surface, but that little bit is left around the edge, and so what you get is a ring of fire. Is that the kind that we had previously when there was that solar eclipse? No, the and one people were supposed to look at the moon, and Trump went out, or look at the sun, and Trump went oh, that, out. And that, that, was, sun. that was that was a total solar eclipse. It was a total, when the, but when the entire face of the sun gets blocked. Okay. Uh, is this one also dangerous to look at when there's a ring of fire around it? Yes. It won't stop people from doing it. But it's not actually, you know, when it's at its, when it's at the ring of fire stage, it's probably, you're pro I'm going to, I'm going to, somebody's going to sue me, mm -hmm. but you could probably actually look sue at the it college. fairly yeah, briefly you because you're not looking at the main part of this. You're looking at the, the, the edge of the sun and that light is okay. not direct. So. I mean, that was the big, when I was a kid and we were kids, what, what, what year was that big solar eclipse when we were kids? Do you remember when the school got out and we early eighties, maybe feels yeah, like to me, maybe 79. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I was in junior high or something. Okay. How, are, are, are we, are we roughly the same age? I was born in 66, 57. How Six, old are you? 68. I'm 68. 68. So I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, two, um, I'm 55. We had to look at it by poking a hole in a piece of cardboard yeah. and, I mean, talk about a disappointment, like up in the <laughs> sky behind you, there is an amazing thing happen happening. And what you get to do is put the <laughs> hole in a piece of cardboard and watch a shadow go by. Like what a trip. No, no. And, and that's, why the, and that's really why the total eclipse is so phenomenal because for the two minutes or, or more that it's actually completely behind the moon, you can look right at it and it's beautiful. And it won't blind you at all. All right. So uh, April 8th, April 8th. Uh, we are running some excursions somewhere in somewhere. Texas, likely, right? Is that what we decided? Well, 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 I think the thing to do would be to find some some meet in some place. Uh, and then like two days before, check the weather and drive to wherever. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Get an RV yeah. or something and then, and then drive like, to Get wherever. on the path. Get on the path right. somewhere. Right, and figure out where it's most likely to be clear. And, and, and we should know that a day or two ahead of time, plenty of time to get there. We're talking about likely the Texas? Well, I'm just it cutting across Texas. Texas? Yes, cutting all the way across Texas, starting in West Texas and coming across and going up to Maine. Um, but for some reason, may, maybe it's just, I, I think of West Texas as being dry, being desert and likely to be likely to clear. be um, a clear. More clear. Yeah I, yeah, I feel that way too. Yeah, I've. I rode my bike all the way across that great state. Yeah, you it's did. You know. Dry <laughs> and the sun's out. I'm just saying yeah. the sun yeah. stays out unless it's, yeah. you know. Uh, so I yeah, don't okay. know, but that, that's a place to start, I think. And I think you're right. That that feels that feels right. And also and that, that, the, the eclipse will the as it goes as in Texas is where the eclipse will last the longest. Oh. And then it will get shorter in duration as it goes up towards yeah Maine. that's what i was going to ask is is there yeah. a place where it's longer in the yeah in the, the united the, states the maximum of... eclipse the time of longest eclipse is actually in mexico uh, not well, too far into mexico 
uh, off the off the border. Oh, so if we get maybe as far west as we can go, mm -hmm. it's more likely to be clear, and it's uh, a longer lasting eclipse for us. Great, great. And then in the and then after that, we can turn our attention to the crisis, uh, the way uh, we're treating people as they try to cross into the United States uh, because we that's right don't have an immigration policy that makes sense to allow people to enter right. the United States. So we can, you know, we do it all, do the whole activist thing. it up. All right, Paul, anything else uh, for us on this, on this fine That's day? That's about it. That's all I got. Those what two a stories delightful, what a delightful chat. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, we only had Jim today. I'm not sure uh, why uh, we, we normally have a, a regular crowd when we're in the, when we're in the mornings, but I think we're not, uh, we're not, we're not up. <laughs> we're not up with our uh, with our people. But Jim, good to have you along the way. And anybody listening to this or watching it later, I mean, if you've watched it for fifty five minutes and forty seven seconds already, well, by golly, you're our kind of people. Share this with someone. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, we we may have a little special edition up tomorrow. We did a Paul. We went to the. I went with Dan, who's often on here. Dan Dietrich. We went to the Wild Goose Festival. Oh yeah, which is not In about North birds Carolina. at all. It's it's yeah. not about birds or fowl. It's just the just a borrowed name in North Carolina, and we uh, did some presentations there. Dan sang. We did some interviews, and uh, we're we're gonna turn a bunch of that into content here on the live stream podcast. So, some of that might be coming out in just a matter of days. So keep your awesome. keep your ears and eyes tuned uh, for such things. And we're, we're gonna figure out how we're gonna do it. Oh, Yabbits! Yabbits is back. Wow, Yabbits! Yabbits. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but is a Georgia guy, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, where, in, yeah. where in Georgia, yeah. I wonder? Yeah. Yeah, but where in Georgia uh, are you? Um, uh, he's, in, he's in Wow, Georgia. He's in Wow, Georgia. Um, uh, I, I think not far from you. Uh, a little place called Cobb. Cobb. Gotcha. Well, gotcha. you're going there, Paul. I know that. Yep. Um, I've been there. Many you're times. going there because you're going to every county in every county, <laughs> Georgia. And, in Cobb, and Cobb, I'm going to go to Kennesaw Mountain hunting ducks. Yeah, you and my brother ought to get together. Yeah, in Cobb County, all I need is a uh, yeah, but we just need you to find us eleven thousand five hundred and seventeen votes there in Cobb County, and uh, that's just just all I need. Uh, just, just need you to do me a little. Just need you to do me a little favor. Oh um, my God! Hey, how, when when do you launch this? Uh, this little outing of yours to go to every county and shake I've hands. I've already started. And... I've uh, I've done. I've only done. I guess thirteen of them. Okay. Um, in the last six weeks, maybe eight weeks, and okay. uh, it's going to last. It, it, I got a job and a family. It's going to take me a couple of years to finish this. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then we'll each time we have a conversation like this, we'll try to remember to check in. Awesome. And, and see if we, uh, you know, see how it's going. Yeah. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll keep up with you. We'll, we'll be the Paul bird watcher watcher. <laughs> Nothing more boring than watching okay, people good. watch birds. Yeah. yeah. We'll have a, <laughs> we'll have a watch alert for a guy that's traveling around Georgia watching birds. And, uh, it'll be as interesting as watching the heat dome come rolling in, uh, Woo. when it gets, when it gets hot. All right. Uh, thanks everybody. And we will, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a fine Thursday. If you, if you can do anything about it.